Hello students. Today we are starting a new section on signals and system. So in this lecture we are discussing about what do you mean by signal and the different classifications of signals. Let's go to the topic. So what do you mean by signals? Signals are variables that carry information. Meanwhile if you are hearing a word signals we just remembered the term traffic signal right? So what do you mean by a traffic signal? Its function is to not creating an accident in four vehicles, right? So a traffic signal, we have three types of colors. So if the signal color is right, which means that we have to stop our vehicle and that traffic light is passing some information to the driver, means to stop the vehicle. That's why the color is right. So if the color is green, which means that we have to take our vehicle like that, this is a simple and basic representation for a signal. So signals are variables that carry information. It is described as a function of one or more independent variables. Basically, it is a physical quantity. It varies with some independent or dependent variable. These are the examples of signals. They are V of t. V means the voltage. Here, the voltage is varying with respect to time. The next is the I of t. Here I is the current and the current is changing with respect to time. So here the current is a physical quantity which is depending on the time. Next one is the X of T. X of T is the amplitude. So next is the heartbeat. Heartbeat is giving the information about our heart is working properly or not. Next is the blood pressure. Classification of signals. They are one dimensional and multi dimensional signals. So what do you mean by one dimensional signal? Which means that its function only depends on a single variable. Example for one dimensional signal is the speech signal. Which means that speech can be considered as a signal which can be represented by some amplitude with respect to time. Hence it is a one dimensional signal. Next one is the multi dimensional signal. Which means that the function depends on two or more variable. Example for multi-dimensional signal is the image signal. So we know that an image is a set of pixels. So each pixel has a location. Hence the image is represented by using two dimensions, preferably x and y. For denoting the location of pixel and then the signal value at that location, we are using x and y. This makes that image as a two-dimensional signal. On the basis of communication perspective, we can classify signal as continuous and discrete time signals, analog and digital signal, periodic and aperiodic signal, energy and power signal, deterministic and random signals. Let us see this classification one by one. So first is continuous time and discrete time signal. So what is continuous time signal? So continuous time signal defined over a continuous range of time. A continuous time signal is also called as an analog signal. The signal that are defined for every instant of time are called as continuous time signal. They can be represented by x of t. This is an example of continuous time signal. As you can see over here, for each value in the time, the signal has some finite value. So this is the basic example of continuous time signal. Next, we can go to the discrete time signal. So next one is the discrete time signal. The signals that are defined at discrete instant of time are known as discrete time signals. They are continuous in magnitude. Consider this example. Check the magnitude of the signal. We can see that the amplitude of the signal is continuous like this. But the time is in discrete which means that in between values are missing over here. The signal that are defined as discrete instant of time are called as discrete time signals. They are continuous in amplitude. Here the amplitude is continuous but there is having a discrete value in time. They are represented by or denoted by x of n. Let us explain once more. What do you mean by a continuous time signal? The signal which is defined over a continuous range of time are called a continuous time signal. A continuous time signal is also called as analog signal. The signals that are defined for every instant of time. In this example, here the amplitude and the time is also in continuous form. So when we are considering the discrete time signal, the signals are described only for the discrete 
instants of time. So, in this graph, the amplitude is continuous, but the time is in discrete form. So, the discrete time signals are represented by x of n. The second classification is analog and digital signal. A signal whose amplitude can take any value in the continuous range can be termed as analog signal. The signal over here is an example of analog signal because here the amplitude can take any value on the y axis. Analog signals are both continuous and discrete time signals which means that all continuous time signals are analog in nature but all analog signals are not continuous in nature. Uh, this is because some discrete signals are also analog signals. Second one is the digital signal. A signal whose amplitude can take only finite values is termed as digital signal. This is an example of digital signal here whose amplitude can take only two different values which may be either high or low. The signals that are discrete in time and quantized in amplitude are called a digital signal. What do you mean by quantized in amplitude? Which means that the signal is assumed to lie within a predefined range. So, a signal whose amplitude can take only finite number of values can be termed as digital signal and these digital signals are quantized in amplitude. From the two statements, don't get confused with digital and discrete time signals. The signal the digital signal can take only finite values on the y axis while the discrete time signal can have values only at the discrete time intervals. Similarly, do not get confused with the continuous time signal and analog signal. As I said, analog signal can take any finite value on y axis while continuous time signal shows the continuity of time on the x axis. So, this analog signal can be continuous or discrete time signal. The third classification is periodic and aperiodic signal. A signal which repeats after finite time t, then it is called a periodic signal. Let us consider this example. Here, the signal is repeating after a finite time period. So, after the point t, or after the time period t, the signal itself is repeating. So, this is an example of periodic signal. A continuous time signal is said to be periodic with period t if it satisfies the condition x of t plus t is equal to x of t for all t. Which means that if we shift the signal by one time period, then also the signal remains the same. A discrete time signal x of n is said to be periodic with period n if and only if x of n plus n is equal to x of n for all n. Here also the same condition which means that if you are shifting the signal by one time period then also the signal remains the same. At the same time a signal which does not repeat after finite time interval is called a aperiodic signal. So, these are the basic definitions for periodic and aperiodic signal. A periodic signal is the one which repeats after finite time t. Meanwhile, a periodic signal is the one which is not periodic in nature. Consider this example. Here the signal is not repeating itself. We can't so we can't take any time period because the signal is not repeating by itself. So, these are the basic differences between periodic signal and aperiodic signal. Next, we can go to the fourth classification. Next one is the energy signal and power signal. As we all know that the strength of the signal is measured in terms of the energy of the signal and this energy of the signal can be given by the following expression. This is the equation for finding the energy of a discrete time signal. Energy equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n square. For power, p is equal to limit n tends to infinity 1 by 2n plus 1 
sigma n equal to minus n to n x of n the whole square. These are the equations for finding energy and power of a discrete time signals. By using this equation, we can find energy and power of discrete time signals. Based on this equation, we will solve problems that we will discuss in details in our coming section. So, in the case of an energy signal, energy is finite value. That means that energy is in between 0 and infinity and its power is 0. For a power signal, power is finite, which means that power is in between 0 and infinity but energy equal to infinity. This is an important point that you should be noted. This is very important for competitive examinations. Energy signals are a periodic in nature and power signals are periodic in nature. In short, a signal has finite energy is called an energy signal. A signal has a finite power is called a power signal. But it cannot come together. Fifth one is the deterministic and random signal. A signal exhibiting no uncertainty of value at any given instant of time is termed as deterministic signal. Here, we can easily predict the signal value at any time instant by using some mathematical equation x of n is equal to sin pi n and for continuous time signal x of t is equal to 0.5 t. We can get x of n at any instant n by putting values for n in this equation and also we can do the same for continuous time signal. Next one is the random signal. A random signal is characterized by uncertainty before its actual occurrence. So consider this figure here the signal is highly distorted and it's quite uncertain. So we cannot predict any value. Example for such signals are noise signal. So today we discussed about signals and its classification. I hope all of you understood this topic clearly. We'll see you on the next section. Thank you.